This is Talk It Out, the Women's Agenda podcast. Tune in for your weekly download on the latest news, trends and ideas affecting your career or your business. Here's your host, Angela Priestley. Hello and welcome to the Women's Agenda podcast. Today I wanted to share with you something a little different from the usual discussion we have here on this podcast. It's an interview with Emma Isaacs, the global CEO of Business Chicks. Emma successfully ran a recruitment business from the age of just 18 before acquiring the then little-known business chicks in her mid-20s. She's just published her first book, Winging It, and we discuss some of the key things she's learned about living a big life, networking, leading, and launching in the United States. We also talk about time management and staying organized, especially given the fact Emma has five kids. Uh, So just a reminder, Women's Agenda is a daily news publication for career-minded women. We share the latest news and views on tech, business, politics, life and more just before lunch every day via our free email newsletter update. You can go to our website to subscribe and if you like this podcast, then please leave a review. Now for the chat with Emma. Thank you for being here, Emma Isaacs, the founder and global CEO of Business Chicks. And I've got your book in my hand, Winging It, which I've been reading over the last few days and learning a lot from so really? <laughs> thank you what do you like most about it well I liked all the time management tips because yeah. I am a bit of a time management tip junkie yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. every day I try to implement something <laughs> new and find a few more hours in my day and yeah. sometimes they work and sometimes I don't but yeah. um, and also the organization tips around having kids which is something that um, was nice to see from you in terms of um, having five kids and, and running a really big business as well and how you make that work with the lunch boxes out every <laughs> night and yeah. the bread knife ready to go, ready to make them the next morning. I, I love know. that. So it's a little bit detailed, but it works, right? Yeah. So yeah. plenty in the book for, for, for anyone, particularly around those of us running businesses as well. And those of us who aren't just in leadership positions as well. Um, the, there's loads of leadership advice, particularly around building a great team and a great culture and mm. showing up in a really great way as well. So... One of the things I wanted to ask, first of all, was um, looking at just, I'm keen to know what you wanted to do in high school. And because you mentioned you you dropped out of university, it wasn't for you. You got started in businesses quite young. So what what were your plans in high school as a self-described bossy child, I should say, too? (laughs) Yeah, actually not self-described. It was my mother described Ah, me as that. Ah, okay. But I could see it, obviously. Mm. Look, I don't think I had a really clear plan or set path. And that's kind of been the, you know, theme of my life. Um, and, and it showed up very, very early on. But, you know, I, I went to high school and, and did that obligatory work experience in year 10. And I had no idea what I wanted to do. So I went and sat down with a careers counsellor and I said, you know, what, what what should I do for my work experience? And she said, Emma, you're really great with people. You should get into HR. And I said, oh, great. I'll, I'll go check that out. And I had no idea what it meant. So I ran away and looked it up mm. and found myself uh, doing work experience in an HR department and, and loved the exposure that I got. So made up my mind then and there that I wanted to be in the corporate space with people doing HR. And so from there, I went to university and uh, attempted a Bachelor of Business, majoring in HR. And as you said, I I lasted for all of about six months. Okay. What what was it about university that wasn't for you? I could just see that it wasn't going to go fast enough for me. I'm Mm. someone who likes to shortcut everything and someone who's quite obsessed with time as well. So I thought, you know, again, I didn't have a clear plan of what I wanted, where I wanted to go or who I wanted to be, but I knew I wanted to get there much more quickly than university could allow me. Mm. And I'm the type of person that likes to just really learn from people and learn from um, the doing rather than, you know, I suppose the um, the thinking. And that was my, I, I didn't, again, I didn't have a plan. I didn't know how it was going to work out, but I just thought this is not going to be the place where I can learn the most and learn the quickest. Mm. And I completely understand that it's changed these days and... You know, there are so many amazing um, universities and colleges out there that can fast track. But back in the day when I went there, it was the lectures were taught by people who had never run businesses before. They'd perhaps never even worked in in business before. So, you know, and, and already by the time I got to university, I'd read hundreds of books yeah, on yeah. entrepreneurs and business people. And I'd already schooled my, myself on how I felt life could be and how you know business could could work so by the time I got to university I was kind of th- sitting out the back thinking this is not what I know of it and I want to go discover 
the business that I know from the books I've already read and yeah. the people I've studied. Which is quite an interesting way to go about it because often we would end up reading those sorts of books maybe later on. Or, but because one thing you mentioned in your book was that you were listening to things like Tony Robbins in the car on the way to school with your dad. Yeah. And so that do you still have that same appetite for sort of personal development style material or do you feel that you learn more from the people around you or I, I, ha- I absolutely have the same appetite for learning and from learning through people and their experiences I don't have the same resources available you know in terms of time to be able to study as much as I'd want to but you know in a lot of ways business chicks that I've had for almost 13 years has been my MBA you know I've, I've mm. gotten to meet and sit with these people I've gotten to study them not just through having them on the stage but by being with them outside You know, I I, I get to experience meals with them and and traveling with them. And so I get to see how they conduct themselves in business and and see how, you know, we get to have these one-on-one conversations on how they've been able to scale and how they've been able to grow and face challenges. So in a lot of ways, you know, I think education is absolutely everything, but I don't think it needs to be boxed, Mm. you know, in the same box off the same shelf for every single person. And I think that's important that we teach our young people that. Um, Yeah. You know, I, I knew education was, I come from a very, very, very academic family and you know I went to an opportunity class and I went to a selective high school and you know my parents were appalled when I dropped out of university um but but they've, they've kind of come around now and, and they're okay with it <laughs> they're okay with that decision aren't they yeah, they're amazing cool. that isn't it so by the time what you had a business at uh, the recruitment business in yeah. your early 20s yeah and then uh you acquired business chicks at what was it 26 yeah it was yep. 26 wow yeah, okay yeah. No, I, I st- well, I you know helped to found the recruitment company when I was eighteen. So I, I dropped out of university after those six months. I met mm. someone out socially, a great woman who's just started a recruitment company. She was about five, or maybe seven years older than me at the time, and she said, "Look, I'm looking to hire someone. Why don't you come and interview with me?" And anyway, long and boring story short, you can <laughs> read the book. Mm. Uh, but I ended up working there, and together we we um, built this recruitment company, which ended up doing really really well. Yeah. And yeah. then after those, yes, seven or so years, I. Um, was invited along to a business chicks event and was immediately uh, insulted by the name and uh, my friend said you know get over yourself Emma just come along and I absolutely <laughs> caught religion on uh, the concept and the community then and there and yeah again long story short but um, yeah. ended up you, buying you, the business yeah you've come around to the name uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, look, I, of course I have because we have turned the name into something that means, you know, mm. the, the different, um, you know, it's all esoteric, isn't it? But, um, yeah, I mean, to start with, I mean, no one likes the name Chicks. Um, it's derogatory. It's, it's less derogatory in Australia than the US. Um, but I think people know from our 13 years of really, really hard work mm. that we are the absolute original feminists. We want nothing but... Um, you know, to, to equal the playing field and that's what our work is day in, day out and it almost doesn't matter what the name means. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, after you acquire the business, because I know in, in the book you talk about the process of taking that name to the US, which was obviously a different market. You were starting a little bit more on unfamiliar grounds there, but mm. um, locally, did it? Did you think about changing the name? Yeah, yeah, we absolutely did. We had many, many, many discussions and I think I write about it in the book uh, people were divided a lot of people said to me oh no it's amazing it makes you stand out you should keep it you've got the legacy of Australia there's a lot of Aussies who will be able to springboard you mm. in the States by keeping the name um, we had a lot of advice to change it yeah. um, you know to, to be honest we were just on such a freight train uh, you know and committed to growing it was almost like we didn't have have time to well, we didn't have time to we just ma- made a decision to keep it um, it probably was not the right decision and um you know, we, we did actually engage a consultant to um, to look at, you know, what the, what our alternatives were. And to be honest, they came up with something like 300 names. Yeah. And it's interesting because back when we started, you know, there was really only business chicks and, you know, the gorgeous Susie Daphnis that runs the Australian Business Women's Network. So it was this wide open, you know, playing field. And, and if we'd wanted to change the name back then, we probably should have because every name was available yeah. right yeah. but now if you want to start a women's community mm. th- there's nothing available there's nothing available for trademarking so um you know d- different time back 13 years ago um but yeah i mean it, it's it's still got a question mark over its head whether we will change the name for growth and, and i think i think it's acceptable in a few different um territories but yeah just not the u.s what surprised me about the u.s is they're actually a lot more conservative they're definitely a lot more conservative than australia but a lot more conservative than we 
that we actually know, you know, until you mm. get into the business landscape and you're on the ground and you're doing business there, mm. it's actually quite a few years behind Australia in terms of gender equality and... Yeah, uh, you know, it's, oh, it's, paid it's, parental leave for one, so... Absolutely, mm. but in terms of the entire landscape, you know, that, that really caused us to take you know, stock and, and sort of inhale and go, wow, we were not expecting that. You know, we always put America up as a panacea for growth and tech and mm. advancement. And it's like, wow, no, actually, you know, it was, it was interesting to see that Australia is a lot further advanced and yeah. than we give it credit for in, yeah. this, in this space. Yeah. Yeah. In the book, there's, um, which I think is great, there's so many different examples of all these wonderful people that you've met along the way and the things that you've learned from them. Some really, you know, big names from Bill Gates to Richard Branson, obviously, um, and um, loads of great businesswomen in there too. But what I really loved was hearing some of the stories of the members, um, Australian members who had come into the network and, and learnt things, met people, whatever it was, and really um, ended up. Um, starting new things or finding new growth or um, forming these great relationships. Mm. And then there's also a, a, a small anecdote there that um, really caught my attention about your own grandmother having six kids and working full-time as a school principal, which I loved because that must have been so unusual. Yeah. Um, I mean, a, a few decades ago. What did you learn from your grandmother? You know, it's interesting. You often don't know the lesson until you know hindsight kicks in and I certainly didn't really fully appreciate what she took on uh you know until I was in my 20s um I I really and I talk about in the book I took a lot of my advice and counsel from her in terms of her parenting style she was a, a, a very 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 loving and supportive mother and then grandmother to her hundreds of grandchildren but she was also uh, a, a little hands off I don't know if that's a that's the right way to say it but she she definitely didn't stress around her parenting she was very um, laissez-faire about you know whatever was to be would be um, and you know I haven't read a ton of parenting books but from the little I have I know that my grandmother you know, really personified the learning that I've had around parenting, which is, you know, the nature versus nurture thing of the way they come out is generally the way they're going to be in our role as parents is to, is to definitely guide and to lead. Mm. That's reassuring. But, I like yeah, that. And, and, so, and it just kind of made yeah. me relax back into parenting. You know, I think we're, we're all mm. so pent up and stressed and how they're going to behave and how, you know, yeah. and how they're going to be and am I doing enough? And, you know, I think if we can take a little bit more, like just everyone take a deep breath and say, you know what, I'm doing my best. Mm. They are, you know, we have to obviously instill great values in them. We have to give them wonderful experiences and we have to lead by example and be role models for our children. But you know what? Like if they, if they come out with this, you know, if they're totally headstrong and, and they're, you know, they're highly independent, they're probably not going to be shy and retiring in their 20s. You know, mm. that's, that's how it's going to turn out. So, yeah. yeah, she very much taught me to just, um, you know, relax and, and do your best and that if you have if your child is securely attached and, and loved and feels safe then that that's your work that that's mm. that's the work there yeah and that's so good to remember if you're spending a lot of time in your work as well right. in your business or in your job or whatever it is because as as parents you can have that moment of oh no, god I picked them up from late from daycare I forgot <laughs> to make the hat I forgot about the pajama party yeah or I thought the birthday party was on Saturday but it was actually on Sunday is what I did over the weekend <laughs> so you? and you think oh no they're gonna remember these things and you know it's going to affect them five years ten years and they won't become the what they thought School they were going to become yeah exactly <laughs> it's all over no yeah. but it's not that's reassuring and I think there's something in that definitely so yeah there yeah. is and and that's I don't want to paint a picture of perfection at all I mean my kids can be complete rat bags they are most of the time and you know I drop the ball all the time and but that's life you know it's not this it's not perfect it's not well-rounded and these experiences mm. shape who they are they shape who we are and I think it just comes back to doing your best and being kind to yourself and yeah just relaxing a, l- a little more into it yeah yeah and we just had your your second oldest here in um the, that was actually the, the third studio. sorry your She's third the middle oh, one. Yeah, the middle, middle one. child yeah ah, okay so there's three girls two boys Is no that... it goes three girls a little boy then a little girl's the baby oh uh, okay <laughs> yeah okay so and um she was very excited to see your book so what does that mean to you to see I guess your daughters and your son seeing that you've, you've written this book that you're running this business that you you've got this international career I mean they might just think it as normal but yeah, um, yeah. I don't know I mean it doesn't I'm one of these people that I want my work just to talk for me rather than me mm. have to talk about it so I struggle with 
you know, like a lot of women being really proud of that. I mean, I I am really, really, really proud of this book. You know, um, the publisher told me through the whole process, you want to come out with a product that you can hold in your hand and feel really proud of. And I can hand on heart say we worked so hard on, you know, on the project and we... I'm really, we're really, really, really proud of it. So, yeah, I mean, it does feel good when um, my daughter picks up the book and goes, Mommy, that's you. Um, mm. You know, the, if that means anything at all, who mm. knows? But, you know, maybe subliminally they'll think, you know, if my mum can do this, then I can do that. And, yeah. you know, that's, that's what it's all about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the writing process, how did that happen? Um, it might go back to your time management tips, but yeah. how do you make the space to take on a huge project like that when – Obviously, your life is, is so full in so many other ways. Yeah, well, I was thinking about this the other day because a gorgeous girlfriend said, I can't believe you did it so quickly because we signed the deal with the publisher in December last year. So we, we kind of turned it around in a year. And in, in that time, I had a, my fifth baby. And yep. so I was nursing okay. her and yep. I was doing the whole <laughs> sleep deprivation thing. But look, the way we tackled it was we put aside hours at a time and we just focused. And I, I think that's the key for almost anything, you know, when you can really to try and, um, you know, just give all your attention uh, to the one thing. So, you know, I had some Mm. very generous colleagues who came over from Australia to LA and sat with me and we would just, you know, almost gamify everything. Okay, we're going to get this chapter out by the end of today or the end of next week. And, you know, there's pictures of me colouring in today. We're going to get to 45,000 words. And so, you know, everything is a game. Everything needs a deadline, I think. Everything needs a deadline, (laughs) right? Yeah. And, And I think also when you involve others in the process of the publishers, you know they give you deadlines and and um mm. you know then then when yeah there was a lot right writing on this book so I, I sort of felt like i was standing on the shoulders of lots of other people to get it done and I, i'm i'm very 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 um tenacious and determined and driven so if i commit myself to something i'm mm. gonna do it so mm. it, it, i mean i know i look back on it now thinking how did i do that you know while while nursing and not sleeping but I just, you've got to set a goal and you've just got to commit to it and involve others in it and, and yeah. get it done. Yeah. yeah. Um, I will ask you about the not sleeping thing because, again, it was just something that, that stood out, maybe a bit of a throwaway line, where you mentioned that you are, I don't know if it was always tired or often tired. Um, you certainly don't look tired to me, <laughs> um, but I can understand why, why you would be. And um, I think many of us can relate to that experience of mm. not necessarily knowing which kid's bed you're going to wake up or which kid might end up in bed yeah. uh, with you. Yeah. Do you have any tips or strategies for, for anyone, kids or no kids, on, on trying to like have the energy and just to stay up yeah. as much as you can, particularly in front of your team? Absolutely. So, I mean, last night my three big girls got in from LA yesterday, so they're jet-lagged out of their mind. So I was in a hotel room with them. They mm. woke up at 3.40 and didn't go back to sleep. And so, so I've got two choices this morning. I can completely complain about that and let it ruin my day and run my day or I can say you know what I didn't get much sleep last night I've still got stuff to do I've got amazing people to meet I've got podcasts to do you know I mean it's it all comes back to your attitude and your mindset and so I've always just tried to be as positive as I can and you know I chose this parenting thing you know you know and I'm, I feel very fortunate that I that I had I had the option to do that so mm. I feel when you choose something you kind of can't complain about it um yeah so you know I mean practical tips I mean I've always had a sleep coach in my babies get to four or five months and then it's I just can't do that anymore so I I, Mm. I do the complete sleep deprivation for that time but after that it's you know they get trained and we are absolutely like the army in our house you know the baby goes to bed on the dot of 6 30 you know we we have a schedule and it's just been the only way that I've been able to um, yeah like I'm a lot more fluid in my business life but at home it's schedule routine routines routines yeah. and, and yes. to the point of like we laugh my little baby's now nine months and you know if we take her outside you know we're all we're all like oh piper this is the sunshine <laughs> this is the outdoors <laughs> you know because she's just in such a routine yeah and it does set you free you know the whole family work around that and 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 she gets to sleep and then she's happy because she gets to sleep and mm. yeah so I'm, I'm i'm pretty militant with with the routine This is a commercial break for Work It Out. We'll be back in a moment. But if you're interested in being a sponsor for Work It Out or Women's Agenda, just drop us a line and let us know. That's womensagenda.com.au. I wanted to ask you about relationships. It sounds like you um, you cultivate good, very good long-term relationships. Um, you mentioned with Seth, Seth Godin that you spent eight years um, emailing him uh, cultivating that relationship. I don't know if that was before you asked him to come out to Australia or if you had... He was from New York and yeah. where he's from New York, I should say. Yeah, yeah I don't know when my first 
ask was of Seth, but I, you know, obviously I, the end goal was to, to bring him to Australia. Um, so somewhere along the line I would have asked him, I don't know, within the first email or... But, you know, I, I, we talk about it in the book a lot and it is... Mm-hmm. You know, I, I feel like a lot of people don't have the stamina to really give the time to relationships and we just want this instant gratification of oh, a yes back from an mm. email but and I feel we give up too quickly so you know for me relationships has all been about you know how do I earn someone's trust how do I show my credibility and that can be a challenging thing in, in you know if no one knows us and we're this small well we're, we're a large network in, in Australia but Australia is a small country you know trying to get the attention of a talent like Seth Godin based mm. on the name of Business Chick so you're already 10 paces behind you know it, it does take time to, to earn that trust and to build that relationship and I'm just willing to put in the mm. effort and you know we talk about in the book as well and find different ways to, to, to get him to say yes and you've got to be creative with that you know, mm. you've really got to yeah, stay the course and, and be creative as, as you can. Yeah, yeah. Mm. And al- also the people who work uh, with you. So your CEO, Olivia, I was also surprised to learn that she was with you uh, when you heard that Business Chicks, the opportunity to acquire Business Chicks might come up. Yeah, yep. yeah. Which um, is in, so, so, so you've been together, working together all that time. Yeah. And obviously making the move to appointing a CEO must have been difficult, I, I imagine. Yeah. Um, what, what could you say, I mean, about just cult- I mean, there are those relationships for, for people that you're trying to get to speak to at your event as well, yeah. but also having those relationships of, of really great people that you work with and friendships and mm. partnerships. Mm. How do you do them so well? Well, to start with, people are front and centre of everything we do. It's, it's, mm. I wouldn't know any other way than to prioritise people, whether that's my team or our customers or our members or, or the talent we get to work with. So Olivia came to me, I think she would have been 19 or 20 at the time, in my recruitment company and she was looking for a temp job. And I said, There's, you know, you can't work uh, for someone else, you've got to work here. So she joined me in my recruitment business 100 years ago. And we worked together for six years there, and then she went and spread her wings somewhere else. Then she came to Business Chicks and did a four-year stint. Then she went to Commonwealth Bank and then came back. I asked her to come back as our CEO. And, I mean, Olivia's brilliant, and I could not do what I do without her. She's um, led the Australian business in my absence, you know, so terrifically, better than I ever could. Um, but, you know, she, she's one of probably six or seven people who have done three or four or five years in our company and then gone somewhere else and gone and, and you know, turned around and said, can I come back? Mm. So we've got a number of people who are on their second uh, stint with us. And we love that. You know, I, 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 th- I think it's, you know, it really does come back to culture and the way you treat people and people can see through that. And, mm. you know, that's about giving time to people and it's about being genuine with them and it's about caring for them as a person, not just, you know, someone mm. who's working in your business. And my my brand of doing that is by being, you know, hopefully fun to be around and, and I'm always sort of the joker in the office and, um, you know, just try... I mean, every, it's like parenting. You can't parent every person, every child the same, you know, and you can't lead every person in your business the same. So I try and understand mm. what, what, their, what their triggers are and what motivates them. And, and you know, we talk about it a lot as well. We're, we're obsessed with strengths. We, we um, Every single person in our business, you know, I can tell you their top five strengths. Mm. And we always try to work to them as well. So, yeah, I mean, the, the people thing is really, really important to me. I, you know, I've been known to write seven, 800 Christmas cards at the end of the year and not wow, just a, okay, not yep. just a dear and mm. happy Christmas love Emma you know I pour my heart and soul into that yeah. you know, and people might think I'm crazy to do that and I've had people you know beside me over the years say oh such a waste of your time why are you doing that I'm saying no this is where I need to be spending my time mm. you know we launched a knowledge and study tour to the US um, at the end of the year a few weeks back um and I wanted to invite 100 people personally and I sat there and it took me most of the day to email every single person and I put in there why I thought they should come and join us you know mm. and again other people might look at that and think what is she doing that's just you know a yeah. stupid waste of there's time there's something so special about that personalized note if it's an email if it's handwritten yeah. whatever it is but it, it's um, just saying i see yeah. you and i and you matter to me as a person and i care mm. and you know i think that's what i think with the talent that we've brought in over the years you know we will uh, we've got 100 stories of people will bring in from the states and their their flight will arrive at 6 30 and we'll go in at 4 30 a.m to their hotel room and deck it out in you know, Aussie <laughs> flags mm. and, you know, their favourite vodka and their favourite chocolate and, you know, and those sort of things get remembered and, and mm. people appreciate them and then they, they, they talk about it, you know. They're kind of doing the, your, your PR for you. Yeah. And so it all does come back to 
you know, commerciality and, a, and, a, and a, it has a, a business sensibility. But, you know, to me, people are just everything. That's, yeah. that's where I want to put my time and my relationships are really, really important to me. Yeah, yeah. Mm. When you mentioned the strength-based um, approach to knowing people's strengths mm. um, and really, I guess, sticking to the things that you're good at every day if you're running a business, if you're in a team, if you're leading a team, whatever it is. Mm. What would you say are your strengths and when did you discover what they were? (laughs) Yeah, well, I've done a lot of different personality profiling. I'm sure all of us have over the years. Um, You know, and it's funny when you actually sit down with a a coach or a consultant and and, and you work it out, um, then you can kind of go back in time and see how it plays out as a child. So I I can see my kids' strengths right now and, and... you know, to get too woo-woo, but they're love languages as well. And so I try and understand that um, in terms of parenting and, and in my team. But, yeah, so I was – competition is one of my, my top five, so I'm highly, highly, highly competitive. So as a kid, I played a lot of sports. Um, I sometimes struggled in teams, but I liked individual sports. Mm. Um, you know, one of my other strengths is being visionary, so I can see what how, how I want things to be in the future, but I have no idea in how to step that out. Like, I can – just stand here and go. I don't. I don't know where to start. I, you know, I, I can't do that. But I can mm. tell you exactly how it needs to look. Yeah. Um, yeah. So competition. Uh, oh, you got me on the spot. But <laughs> yeah. Um, what, what else? Oh, influencing. I'm a really good influencer. That's one of my top five. So I need to be in roles where I can uh, influence people to, to my way of thinking. And yeah, yeah. I, th- I think I kind of designed my role without knowing all that. And it yeah it worked out somehow. <laughs> Could I add networking? Yeah. yeah, yeah, I don't think that's a that's an. And I think I mean I we often think of networking as just going and talking to people at events right. and how good you are at that, whatever it is. But it sounds like I mean when you mentioned writing eight hundred Christmas cards, and, yeah. and personally inviting a hundred people or so. I mean I'll describe that as networking. Yeah, too. definitely. Yeah, yeah, I think that they call the strength is related, but yeah, it, it comes back to networking and relationships and yeah. how we show up with other people for sure. Yeah. Mm. Okay, so I have a few more questions. I wanted to ask about, um, I guess, women starting businesses. So mm-hmm. we see, even on Women's Agenda, uh, women, uh, female entrepreneurs and women running small businesses or running their own businesses, it's, it's, it's only a small portion of our audience, a lot of our audience out there in Great. corporates, um, mm-hmm. in working in large organisations. Mm-hmm. Um, we do find surveying the audience that um, a, a, a good percentage of them are interested in starting their own business. Um, we also do hear from our audience saying that... Um, They've, they've started businesses particularly to try and uh, acquire some flexibility in their lives, maybe mm. after having kids. Um, they may have uh, given up the corporate career to do it mm. um, and it has or hasn't worked out or maybe they're not earning as much as they'd like or maybe they are, it doesn't matter. But um, I wanted to ask, I mean, do, do you have any concern about the portion of women who are leaving corporates? Do you, do you think that... Oh, for mm, sure. Yeah, for sure. There's a huge talent exodus. So Yeah. And and I and I, I see the quandary from both sides, um, you know. And, and I want to encourage women to explore entrepreneurship, but I also, you know, issue that encouragement with a warning that it's absolutely not for everybody. And mm. I think we are living in times where we completely glorify yeah. entrepreneurship mm. and we glorify small business. And you know, again, it's I, I hesitate there because I, I I really want people to experience it. But, you know, it comes back, and you alluded to it as well, you've got to completely be clear on why you're doing it. Mm. So you said in the, your little intro there, like if you if you are doing it for work-life balance or if you're doing it for lifestyle reasons then and you're happy to lose money, yeah, yeah. then that's great. Mm. But a lot of people want to try and, and achieve too many things by starting their own business and it becomes really, really, really stressful and it all falls apart. So... Mm. You know, I just, I just say, you know, really study and do your homework and, and try and talk to as many people as you can before you leave your corporate job to understand, you know, what it's going to look like and what it's going to feel like and understand that there are very, very, very few businesses that actually make it from a financial point of view. Mm. You know, and if, if your reason is, is to make more money, then again, you want to really you know, do your homework and understand whether this is going to be the right financial move, you mm. know, and, and I see it a lot with a lot of our members, you know, they're, they're in super talented women who are in great paying jobs and are giving a lot of value to the corporate world and to the businesses that they, they work in and they, you know, ha- have a different view of what it takes to start and run a small business mm. and they leave and it creates this huge amount of stress, not only on the, fa- you know, the, the family, but on themselves as well. And then there's this, 
self-esteem you know battle that comes and then I wasn't good enough and and it's almost um tail between your legs having to go back into the corporate world and again it comes back to I think we have to lighten up and be easier on ourselves mm. and be kinder yeah. but of course there's a, ma- there's a massive that's a whole other you know mindful when it comes to the huge talent gap in mm. I was going to say corporate Australia but it's a corporate America as well and how we plug that um and how our workplaces support it and you know, we try and lead the way at Business Chicks with it. We have a very, very, very flexible yeah, we absolutely workplace. Do. We yeah. do. And mm. look, f- from an employer perspective, it, it is really, really challenging. We've had to have some really, really hard conversations. We, Liv and I have, you know, gone through so much anguish and not pain. That's, that's quite dramatic. But, you know, we have sat there and said, we want to be this for women. How do we do it? You know, how do we be this for, for our, um, you know, team members? And how do we lead the way so that we can show that other workplaces can do the same? But of course, it's challenging when you know you're, you're in a meeting and, and you know there's five people meant to be in the meeting and three are at home. You know, with, with sick kids, it, it's a really, it's a thing. You know, and um, we we've navigated I think really really well. Um, a lot of our workers work remotely. Um, we've had to put in some um, you know some, some guidelines around that. So if you're working from home. Um, you know, we have to have child. You know, you have to have childcare on the days you're working from home. Otherwise, you know what it's like yeah, when you're trying to do both. It's impossible to work from home with kids. Yeah, it's yeah. impossible. It's like, you know, we all try and do it, mm. but it's it's really really hard to, yeah. to do both. Um, I, mean, I mean, I guess you can while they are asleep, but um, it yeah. might be impossible to, to function long term. Yeah, yeah. Trying absolutely. to burn me not all that way. So yeah, mm. but, but but I do know this. I know, as we all know, it, there's no one one solution fits all and there's no silver bullet and it's not going to happen um, overnight but I really feel strongly that we as largest network for women in this country have to lead the way from our own culture and our own workplace and and it just means a lot of Skype calls with you know boobs hanging out <laughs> and feeding babies and you know toddlers running around and and you know yeah we, yeah. we, we try I think that's the thing we're here and we're trying and we're we're, we're experimenting with so many different things and we're just we're just doing our best okay so your book is called winging it so thank you for being here Emma, but i have to ask uh, just finally are you still winging it yeah gosh every day every single day yeah. still winging it I, I think i think it gets a little bit easier you know winging it is just a metaphor from for my life and the way i've you know <laughs> i went to uni and dropped out and had a go at running business i'd never had babies before and i had a go and um, you know, it, it's just it's a metaphor for not exactly knowing how things are going to turn out, but giving it a shot regardless. It's mm. a metaphor for going easy on yourself, you know, and, and being kinder to yourself. Um, so, yeah, a- absolutely. We're it every single day um, and we're loving it. We're just winging it, really, we're, aren't we? We are. Yeah. We're all in the same boat. And, and if I- you think you're not, I think there might be something wrong with you. So. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much, Emma. Um, good luck with the uh, with the launch of the book over the coming weeks. And the book is called Winging. Thank you for being here. Thanks, Anne. Appreciate it. That's a wrap for Talk It Out, the Women's Agenda podcast, powered by Eagle Waves Radio. Don't forget to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and jump on the website for more amazing shows. Catch you next time. Mm-hmm.